Okay, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to go first and Bob's going to do some big picture stuff at the end. Okay, um, it's very humbling and I've, I'm very happy to be here and I just want to thank everyone that's created this incredible event. And I'd like you all to close your eyes and imagine, imagine, and oh actually no, a pick up an imaginary magic microscope. And the microscope is magic in lots of ways. Um, it's going to show you all kinds of things that are happening in the soil, but it's a two-way one, so it kind of goes back into your body as well, and it um, shows all parts of the living system, parts of, and including you, parts of, of you that you maybe didn't know existed and which are able to um, see things which we haven't seen before. So we're going to look at some amazing black earth, maybe terra preta soil from the Amazonian jungle or the river basin. Um, and so we're looking through this magic microscope and we've got it down there in the soil and what we can see is, first of all, it's really black. It's really, really black. First glance, it's really black. But this magic microscope enables us to see everything that's moving, enables us to see loads of colours and enables us to not only see the colours but because it's a two-way microscope into our own mind and it um, opens our own all kinds of things in our own head, we can, we can know that those colours relate to um, different minerals, different molecules. We can see all kinds of different microbes and fungi and they're all different colours and we know what they all are and we can identify them. And most importantly, so we can see, you know, it looks black to begin with, but there's lots of air in there. It's aerobic. There's lots of life in the air. There are loads of, we can see really high levels of minerals and we can see them all, they're all different colours and they all look different and they're all vibrating differently and they all have different um, strengths of um, electrical energy and current flowing through them and out from them. They're changing shape. So we can see lo a huge diversity of things in there. Colours, we can really notice that it doesn't look as though there's any separation or any like skin between one thing and another. So it's still energy and colour. And things are moving and changing and we can see exchanges happening. We can see things growing and regenerating, building, living and dying, degenerating. And bits of the, degenera the de degenerating thing get grabbed by something else. And so it just, it feels like, um, it looks like this incredible, alive, enormously diverse and enormously integrated, connected, like living thing. And so into that, into that thing, we see a seed get planted. And the seed, it's a bean seed. Maybe it's a corn seed, it doesn't really matter. And so the seed gets planted, and the seeds are really strong, healthy, vibrant seed. We can see it pulsing, we can see it vibrating. And because the seed was grown to be high bricks, nutrient dense, it's got a lot of carbon in it, and it's got a lot of manganese in it, and we can tell that by the colours that are coming off it and the vibration that's coming off that pulsing seed in this living environment in the soil. It attracts water really fast. Carbon always attracts water. And, the mic and as the seed coat becomes moist, um, it attr attracts microbes that break down the seed coat, um, break down all the phytates and the anti-nutrients in the seed coat, and the seed swells, and a root, a root, a tap root comes down into this living environment. There are loads of um, microbes and fungi and really alive, living, moving things in this environment. And the taproot that comes down also doesn't appear to have any separation between it and all the colour and the life and the vibration in the soil. It's moving into it, things are connecting with it. The, the, um, the fungi and the microbes in the soil becoming connected to that root. And as the root goes down, the first two leaves go up. And so up until the first two leaves go up, and, um, all the energy for that growth comes from within the seed. So the stronger and healthier that seed was to begin with, the stronger that tap and the taproot will be that goes down and those, 
the bigger and stronger those two leaves will be that go up. But now we can see a, real, a switch, and if we're watching really carefully through this magic microscope, we'll notice that there's a really strong pulsing energy going from the leaves down to the root, out into the soil, connecting with the microbes and the fungi in the soil and the minerals, and then going back up into the plant, creating a really strong electromagnetic lightning rod, and that, that plant becomes an electromagnetic lightning rod which attracts the strength of it and the amount of electric energy that it holds is what attracts in or has a direct relationship to how much it attracts in from the universe. And so we've got this plant and because we've got a functional rhizosphere, a functional soil that's got so much colour, so much energy, so much life, the phosphate, the available phosphate in the soil is able to grab loads of minerals in the soil and carry them into the plant and the phosphate um, synthesizes, um, catalyzes the photosynthesis process which means the plant's able to photosynthesize more and more efficiently and more strongly which means that it, it has more sugars in it and it means it's got a stronger electrical current in it so it brings in more energies from the universe. So the, plant, the quality of that plant goes up and up in every way and it goes from being producing simple sugars to complex sugars to complete sequestering complete proteins in its, in its body to sequestering omega-3 and omega-6 into its reproductive and vegetative tissue to what, w what we currently know is the highest level it can operate at, which is the level where it's producing essential oils, which um, is how plants communicate with the whole ecology and with us. And so every plant can be medicine. Every plant can photosynthesize to this um, ability and every plant, plant can, is medicine if it's grown in a functional rhizosphere. So one of the key things about plants that are grown in a functional rhizosphere is that they sequester more, they sequester carbon, not only into their bodies, but really importantly into the soil. So they build soil. It's through this process of photosynthesis and life in the soil that we build soil and we build life. And all life as we know it is totally dependent on that process. So um, that is what I call a regenerative process. If we're working with the laws of nature, the soil has got air, it's got moisture, it's got high levels of balanced minerals, and it's got a full range of the, the microbes that we need, then there is no reason why we can't be building soil, building life, and increasing the health of all life in the ecological niche that we're in. The issue that... Um, there's two key components to making that work. One of them is the genetics of the seed, and the other one is the ecology or the environment, which I don't want to talk about that one anymore. The seed is a really important part of it. So we've got, a, we've got a range of seeds to choose from when we want to grow our food. We've got open pollinated heritage seeds. We've got um, hybrid seeds, F1 hybrids. We've got CMS seeds, which most people don't know what they are. They're actually genetically engineered seeds, which have gone, been hidden under the carpet and they're being labelled as F1 hybrids. So when you buy um, certified organic um, brassicas in this land, they're mostly CME, grown from CMS seeds. Okay. So, um, and then we've got GE seeds and the whole glyphosate story. So the only seeds that I know of that are fully capable of communicating with the microbes in the soil and the life in the soil that are fully able to embody in their bodies the complete range of minerals they need to grow to be nutrient dense and high bricks food and that are fully able to complete, fully nourish human bodies uh, is the food grown from open pollinated heritage seeds in a fully functional rhizosphere. So um, I just, most of the, well yeah, I won't, don't want, I won't bother talking about all the degenerative stuff. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> so I just, uh, the main, my main message now is that um, We've got the largest collection of heritage food plants in this land. We are looking for, we can't hold that collection any longer. It's too much for us. We need support. We need everybody to pick up a brochure, which we've got a whole lot of. I'll get them out later. Become a member, pass the brochure on. Go on the website, become a member, pass the brochure on to someone else so they can become a member. And we're specifically looking for a range of 
businesses who can work with us. We've got loads we can offer businesses and people that work in businesses, and we want to develop relationships with businesses to, so we can save the seeds so that we can get on with the job of making these seeds become the seeds that our food has grown from in this land and around the world. Kia ora. Okay, um, we're out of time, but I'll quickly add that uh, we went through this journey. We've been on this journey for about 37 years now. And, and what we got to at a certain point was um, we found the canary in the cage and we kicked the cage and there was no response. Um, the industrial paradigm that we live in is inherently degenerative and unsustainable. We have to find a different way. So the Kong Institute at that point said, okay, it's not just about the seeds, it's also about the productive e ecosystems that we pull together, and it's about how we change the development, our economic and social development. And quickly, um, the, the industrial paradigm is mainly about empowering the cities. This is where all the energy goes, and it's depleting the rural areas. 3% of the land of our global land is in cities. 97% is elsewhere. This is where the action is in the 97%. We actually have to find another way of nurturing that 97% and changing the agenda in the cities. And that's mainly what we want to do.